uh, yeah, here we see the um, road tool, and the road tool is also quite useful for terrain modification. It consists out of certain points. So you move a point, the road tech check gets updated, and obviously you shouldn't do it too much, otherwise the roads are too, the corners are too steep, uh, too too sharp. You can redefine them, how detailed they are, and how, how wide they are, of course, and then use the road tool to actually um, model the terrain. It's by um, using the integrated Align Height Map tool. See, it automatically creates a nice terrain snow, and you got your your road, your mountain already going down here without doing uh, annoying, let's say, by hand sculpting tool like, for example. In earlier times you had to do it like this, really fine tweak it, but then there's always bumps inside. But with the, with the road tool you can really make smooth inclines and declines. And then you might want to check out this section if it plays well. So let's drag a vehicle inside and see how it plays. So like this. Yeah, it's working quite well. Building, for example, such houses here. Um, we came up with a pretty cool GLM granular level modeling system. It's like out of little blocks we built those buildings. As you might see here, it's a repetition of certain elements. So you pick one and you say, uh, put it over here. And you can make it snap, use snap tools to really snap it next to each other. Um, obviously, later you know need to detail it, it's like for example here, single elements, put in a sign, put in some uh, air conditioners and to make this interesting looking. And the blocks have a simple physics hull inside and as you as you will see, if I turn on the wireframe, it automatically culls the background, uh, the background geometry away and there's no need for any further optimization like placing manually these areas or portals, it automatically gets culled and there's a big frame rate after buildings. So anything what is behind this building here, huge polygons here, um, is automatically cut away. So frame rate is pretty good in such areas. Same thing is for indoors. Indoors is also all little elements you, st you stick together. You can stretch it, you can deform it, you can rotate it. It's pretty much like in a 3D application. Designers play simple objects and then their artists can redefine them and make them more high poly, more interesting looking. They can actually work in layers. Um, layers are single elements of a level. For example, a particle artist might jump into the level and add his stuff to the particle layer. And then at the end of the day, everything gets merged and automatically updated um, the level can be worked on by different people. You might have one art director who is responsible for uh, lighting, so you can jump in and change the, the lighting. And there's no need uh, for calculating light maps and stuff like this, because all these soft shadows are updated in real time. Especially here on the corners, you see really nice uh, ambient occlusion. So these are not shadows, these are ambient occlusion in the corners. and. Uh, when I move, for example, here the light, you see it's really, there's not, nothing pre-baked pre here. It's all calculated in real time in the engine based on um, how, uh, how accessible this area is by, by light, how open it is. The material editor allows you not just to change ordinary, ordinary materials, but to also change the shader parameters. Uh, as you might see here, we got uh, almost all shader covered, starting from human skin to eyes and all cool liquid stuff. Um, ocean shaders, for example, uh, one thing where you can change uh, the height of the waves or you can change the reflection, make it more reflective, the sun multiplier, how to make the sun reflection more. By fiddling around with all these things you can pretty pretty easily get to a kind of photorealistic uh, results. 
uh, in no time. I mean, you tweak it, there's no shader recalculation or so, it's all done in real time. And you get some good results with it. Game logic, for example, adding enemies is done pretty easy. You drag and drop in a new AI character. Let, let's now oh, here's some strange animation. Let's see how it plays. Oh, see, he's already working, shooting at me, and um, with the AI or with any other entity we are adding to the levels, it's a we call it a archetype entity, and the archetype entity links to an actual uh, entity class. The entity class um, can be later changed on. The artist might want to change the models, or the AI programmers might change the accuracy, but this doesn't matter because the designers placed it only as pointers, as links to those uh, archetype entities. So whenever something gets updated in the database in the futures, they don't have to rebuild the levels because all the entities automatically get updated. It's a huge time frame, a uh, time saver because we there's always constant changes happening. They want to have more ammunition, they want to have different weapons, so you update them and the levels get updated in real time. It's not just ordinary fighting, they can have some idle animations going on. And for those kind of game logic, we're using a, f a flow graph, a node-based system that has inputs and outputs. And then you can trigger certain stuff, for example, if, if they are dead, you can trigger, I don't know, even more reinforcements to arrive or any kind of thing you can imagine can be triggered and tested here in no time. It's like, for example, I can make him go to a certain point. Let's place a helper point where I want to have him to go to this spot. Why not? This point can be also a different entity. I can make him always uh, follow a, a, another vehicle build up convoys at the beginning, he starts walking, I change the point, he, he changes it. I, I can really test if he makes the way and uh, checks out. So, together with adding uh, logic, for example, I can check if any of a certain condition is met, I can check if, uh, yeah, if this and this is true, then if true, then I make it happen. I can check if the player, for example, has this item, then certain things should happen, or it's it's completely the perfect control over everything in the engine. I can uh, check at the at the time of day when it's six o'clock in the morning. I I change how how the ocean wind should be. It's it's completely open, so it's your own little game creation tool, especially with the possibility to put out stuff on the HUD. You can create a racing game in here or without any programmer's help. It's all visually possible and can be tested the results in real time here. Yeah. i just show you here how we do generally our track view animation. It's an integrated um, track view tool where you can um, add points to a timeline like this. And at, at frame 6 the camera should be here, at frame 3 it should be here, and then if you change it, let's move it at frame 1 here, if you change it, it, it updates and you can even change now in real time, different, change the timing and add characters here and you have your, your own little movie editor within, within the engine, one mouse click away. Here. I think that that's pretty much covers the, the global topics of the editor that you can build easily and very fast in all aspects of level creation.